One of the gifts I received from a few people here this Christmas was were rocks formed in the shape of a heart. Uh, Patty found one on the beach and brought it to me, and Maggie found someone who had did little sculptures with them. And so I so appreciated those. And I even painted a star uh, for our labyrinth star, a rock that had love on it. So as I start this new year, I've realized that I've struggled on how to love, how to love those who are politically opposite to my views, love those who are not following safe practices that care for others, love those who don't see the same things I think are important as important. And so I've concluded that love is easier said than practiced. Yet I'm challenged to follow the way of love as a believer of Christ who taught us to love. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday this week, this weekend, and so I'm going to quote from his book on courage to love, on how important it is for us to love. He says, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate, violent multi violence multiplies violence, and toughness multiplies toughness, and the descending spiral of destruction, the chain reaction of evil, hate beget begetting hate, wars producing more wars, and this must be broken, or we shall be plunged into the dark abyss of annihilation. This kind of love that Dr. King preached about, the love that Jesus first taught us, the love we practice during the times of pandemics, is a kind of love that changes hearts and minds of those who are addicted to hate and violence and destruction. The psalmist affirms that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and we are a part of the wonderful works of God. Having the courage to love is to first accept that God is acquainted with all of our ways, all of who we are, not the, just the good, attractive parts, but all of us, the snarky, cussing, grumpy, selfish, just, jealous, greedy, insecure, and anxious parts. Accepting the love of God for us then sets in motion a chain reaction that leads to compassion, to acts of mercy, of bringing peace to our communities. There is much in the world that reinforces criticism and self-destruction. And in some communities of color, often the voices of hate are only the only voices they hear. Reverend Rodney Graves in the book, I'm Black, I'm Christian, I'm Methodist talks about how many black families are very intentional about preparing their children for a world institutionally designed for their failure. He says, my dad often said, son, you are wonderfully and marvelously made. Of course, self-destruction and self-criticism is not just limited to the black experience. When I read, read this quote from Dr. King, I wondered how much violence have I done to myself? What do I hate about myself and try to hide from God? And how does that cause a chain reaction in the way I live and how I treat others? It's not a question I have an answer to at this moment, but it's helped me to peer into my soul and look deeply. Perhaps we need to repeat every day, we are wonderfully and fearfully made, a gift from the one who knows and searches us, from the moment we rise up to the rise we sit, time we sit down. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Maybe you should repeat that a few times. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. The knowledge too high for me is that God loves all of creation this way, 
not just me, that's not my family, not just my community, not just my country, not just humans, but all of creation. And as we get to know God and search God's ways, I believe we're called to love one another in the way that God sees us, seeing our fellow humans as wonderfully and fearfully made. We live in this love, and there is no way we can flee from it. It is the foundation of life and sets in motion the elimination of the systems of injustice. There are those who are try, those who put up walls between themselves and others, those who hate, who practice violence against others, who rage and fuss and whine, those who even feel they are better than others and create rules and laws that reinforce inequity. But this is not God's way. In the week to come, there'll be a transition from one leader to another in our country. This means there'll be many new leaders and many aspects of the government. And so I hope they take these words from Dr. King to heart. He says, the call is for a worldwide fellowship that lifts neighborly concern beyond one's tribe, clan, race, class, and nation. And this is a reality, a call in reality, a call for an all embracing and unconditional love for all mankind. We can no longer afford to worship the God of hate or bow before the altar of retaliation. The oceans of history are made turbulent by the ever rising tides of hate. History is cluttered with the wreckage of nations and individuals that pursued this self-defeating path of hate. So I'm praying that our country's leaders will not pursue the path of hate. I also pray that those whose candidate did not win will not pursue the self-defeating path of hate. I pray that I won't pursue the self-defeating path of hate. Rather, I hope we all can learn ways of longing one another through these uncertain times and during these times of anxiousness and uncertainty. In the wisdom of Solomon, chapter one, we hear these words, Love's right love righteousness, you rulers of the earth. Think of the Lord and goodness and seek him with sincerity of heart. Could it be that we're called to know God in the same way that God, we are known by God? To search God's ways and instead of running away from God's presence, sink into God's arms and be embraced by God's powerful love? We may not know what might happen in the days and years to come, but as children of God, we are called to follow the Spirit who calls us to love and allow God to guide us in our actions, our speech, so that we can be those who unconditionally love all of creation, trusting in God's power of love to transform us in the world from a place of fear. Let, this, let our lives be this prayer from Psalms 9-1. I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, and I will tell of your wonderful deeds. Amen.